So hi and welcome to Real Reviews where today I'm going to be talking about Oppenheimer which is the Christopher Nolan home entertainment release uh, which essentially took the world by storm when it was paired up with Barbie of all things um, earlier in 2023 and made itself a billion dollars. By the way it's also up for re-release in January of next year that's 2024 should you want to catch it on the big screen again or for the first time. So uh, this is a big screen movie this is an agenda driven uh, piece of tentpole entertainment if you will um, and Christopher Nolan is known for his uh, essentially think pieces in cinema uh, with Interstellar Inception being the first ones that spring to mind Tenet not so much bit of a timey-wimey affair and obviously you've got the Dark Knight trilogy alongside Prestige and a few others um, so the thing with Oppenheimer is that it is an event movie. Um, it is partially in black and white, partially in colour. It has a searing central performance from Cillian Murphy, try saying that after a few pints. And it features a cavalcade of A-list character actors, some leading men as it were. Uh, and really gets deep down into the politics of what it exactly was that was the Manhattan Project. So let's dive into that review and dig a little bit deeper, shall we? So this bounces around between, um, shall we say, the, the, um, the aftermath of the atomic explosion, the creation of the uh, scientists and, and the sort of the think tank that became the Manhattan Project, um, but also bounces around in terms of um, Oppenheimer's personal life, uh, his philandering as a womanizer, his uh, essential, his um, the, this sort of like overwhelming sense that he was the brightest guy in the room and yet he could barely boil an egg. Um, as one of the lines of dialogue in the movie says, he couldn't run a hamburger stand, but he can pull together those people capable of creating a, a, an atomic device which is um, I invariably going to change the world and, and the whole weaponized industry as a whole. Um, it, it does have courtroom elements. Oppenheimer is uh, it, it's quite a dense piece of filmmaking. Um, it, it is shot entirely on IMAX and, and a black and white IMAX um, format was made specifically by Nolan um, for this film. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Robert uh, Downey Jr. Um, playing Louis Strauss, who was a, a senator who was sort of integral to the, the Manhattan Project. Uh, and first um, sort of heard and brought Oppenheimer on board to try and get things done. Um, Downey Jr. is very good and he really does try and bury himself up beneath this performance and strip away all the movie star elements which make him Robert Downey Jr. He shaves his hair back, it's grey, um, he's got glasses on, there, there's, there's very little animation and there's a great deal of manipulation, very much a, a Svengali character in the overall movie itself. Um, Matt Damon, if he is Matt Damon with a moustache, but to be fair, he actually provides some essential um, comic relief as um, Major Groves, who uh, who was also the, who was essentially the the army, um, the armed forces element of the whole equation. Uh, you've got Tom Conti popping up as um, Einstein there, and you've got Emily Plump who is um, playing uh, Kitty Oppenheimer, and you have. Uh, a wasted, in my opinion, Florence Pugh um, as a as a, a Jean who is a, a communist member, a sympathizer, and also um, Oppenheimer's essential mistress in, in this whole equation. So you've got a lot of competing component parts here. You've also got Jason Clark there um, playing Roger Robb, who is a, a prosecutor uh, who sort of grills Oppenheimer and everyone associated with the Manhattan Project after the, uh, after the fact, uh, as well as Gary Oldman turning up. Um, see if you can spot him, I won't tell him, I won't tell you exactly who he is. Uh, so there's lots of, lots of actors, lots of fingers in the pie, and, and lots of virtuoso stuff going on in terms of cinematography and dialogue and, and atmospherics. So what else is it is exactly that makes Oppenheimer such an essential 4K Ultra HD purchase? Let's tell you that next. 
Well, essentially, the central reason for it is that this is a social document. This is, I think, a very historically important film. Uh, I, I think uh, Nolan lays down his agenda very clearly. Um, this is very much an anti-war movie in that sense, even though, obviously, it goes into the nitty-gritty of, of, of war and, 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 and weapon-making and, and, and the, the necessity sometimes to create this ultimate deterrent. So there's a philosophical debate there. There's there's a, a, a conversation to be had after the movie. And if anything, this this film, very much like Schindler's List, will probably end up on a school curriculum somewhere uh, as an essential uh, as an as an like an essential teaching tool um, to to sort of uh, um, it broaden young minds uh, with regards to the Holocaust as much as as I'm led to believe. The, the such elements in World War II are no longer discussed, which is quite, quite bizarre to me. Um, so uh, if anything, it's more of a call to arms to remember the importance of, uh, of what war can do and what people inherently are, are pushed to in, in, in the name of peace, which is obviously ironic in, um, in the face of Oppenheimer and um, what he created. So um, those are the reasons, uh, aside from obviously the performances and, and the director himself. So I'm going to dive right into that, um, that rating and do that next. So for this one, I'm going to hand out a very rare five out of five on the big old five scale uh, because th this is this is landmark stuff. I think it, it's a it's a, a grand film in the truest sense of the word. Uh, and it, it not only ticks all the boxes, but it's a truly original um, piece of art it, with that regard and it's held together by a, a, a truly astonishing central performance of, of genuine commitment from Cillian Murphy. Uh, so go out, buy it, own it, have it on physical media. Nolan's made a big deal about the fact that they put a lot of work into making the home entertainment release an excellent thing um, and because obviously he's not too keen on streaming services for various reasons. So let's move on to that trailer next shall we? And so it is, you've reached the end of the Oppenheimer Home Entertainment Review. This is a bit where I go. If you like the video, then give me a thumbs up. If you would like to drop a comment in the comment boxes below, then feel free and I will respond. Finally, if you want to subscribe every Tuesday, every Saturday, if you do that, you'll get a little ping and then you can drop in and watch or listen to as much or as little as you would like and then go about your day. Finally, check out the rest of the content or check out my Patreon page. Until later, take care. Cheers now. Bye.